Welcome to a new uh, stupid podcast episode. I'm not going to say the number because I fuck it up every time anyway. So that's easier. I'm just going to say welcome to the new episode. Yeah. I can never go wrong. Exactly. So we have uh, a bunch of questions and there is one toward my favorite art. Yeah. Jujitsu. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. Let's do that as a second question. First right. question that made me laugh a little bit. All right. <laughs> okay, the first question is how to get someone. How do you call this? Hook. Uh, like wife. Yeah. Who hates training to start the process and stick with it? Uh, don't train your wife. Best answer ever given. Honestly, don't go there. Uh, if we go as someone <laughs> in general, right, like a client or everything, is um, Socrates who said, like, and I, I cannot teach anyone, I can only make them think. What, and, and that relates to this in the sense of what he meant by that. It's like you cannot fill a cup that's already full. If the person hates training, does not want to do, it just won't work. Like I imagine like just, you know, I talk about production observation all the time, but imagine going into the workout, what is going on in their head, how they viewing the workout. They are only going to look at the negatives, right? So, and this, they're going to find confirmation that training sucks because if you train hard, training sucks, right? It's hard. Uh, you're in pain all the time. Usually your joints will be aching. Uh, obviously if someone hates training that much, they don't come from an athletic background. So why would they start training hard late in life? Unless they have an overriding why, it won't work. And that's why they don't stick with it. Because their confirmation bias going into exercise is that it sucks. Yeah, yeah but maybe, but maybe it's, it's also the, the type of training that she dislikes. Like, like I would, I would recommend then at least to look for something that she Right, right. so let's go at it like this. Maybe she likes a team sport or a ball right. sport or something. Well, let, let's go at it like this. What are your expectations of the workout? Yeah. Yeah. Let's start with that. Because uh, she, so let's say your wife or someone might feel that they, they hate training because they fail every single time. If you feel you fail a workout, it's because of expectation, not because of the workout. If I say a workout is walking 10 minutes, I think most people will go like, well, I can do that. The problem starts when they tell you, but 10 minutes is useless. Right. right. That's not true. That's not true at all. Yeah. Ten, so, you know, glass half full, glass, glass half empty kind of thing. Is 10 minutes useless? Well, 10 minutes for me, yes, but 10 minutes for someone who's on the couch, no. 10 minutes walking every day versus someone who's not doing it and stays on the couch is progress. So it's never about good or bad. It's only better or worse. If the person is doing better, they're moving forward. So uh, first of all, like we're going to have to talk about that, about expectations, about your prediction. That's not all the predictions are, but anyway, your expectation of the workout. If you expect to lose, you will. Like, you know, Henry Ford said, like, if you think that you can or think that you can't, you're right. So if the person goes into the workout saying, this sucks, it hurts, I hate it, I'm going to lose. Yeah. They will. But the problem in that sense is that, is that approach to the workout and like, why start there? Why, usually in those cases, you see people going into all those activities with such a, man, is the world is on their shoulders. Like, they, you know, they have to do everything at once. They have to get in shape. They have to get strong. They have to get lean. They have to get six pack. Don't get me wrong, social media is not helping <laughs> on that one. But how about starting a workout at the lowest minimal at the minimal dosage required which means if you don't train then 15 minutes of a brisk walk every day is a good start there was a very famous trainer who said how would you train someone say five push-ups a day that's it do five push-ups a day that's all i'm asking you to do and the guy was like right five push-ups a day three months you're in shape it's poor shit so the guy started doing five push-ups a day by day four he's like come on i can do more than that so the guy does 10 Two weeks later, he's like, I can do more than 10. So guy now he's at 15, 20. Two weeks later, he's like, right, so push-ups are not enough. Let me do something else. And he starts to do five pull-ups. And then two months later, he's adding squats. And before you know it, he's on a treadmill. And before you know it, he's at the gym. And then six months, a year later, guy is in shape. Why? Because the, the guy was very smart and knew that if you just say five push-ups a day, they will start. Which is, by the way, the whole Q-minus-one idea, right? 
they will start and as long as they start somewhere at some point they will set themselves up for victory instead of set, setting themselves up for failure so if you give them big workouts it's a setup for failure if you tell them something and they go of course i can do that did you just call me weak i'm like well I'll start with that yeah. and then let them go like i want to do more but, uh, but you're not saying action. anything but so always set up people for um for victory cj sent me a study that was showing like how people make progress and the ratio in that study so again it's a study so don't worry about it ratio wise but it was the idea always that you make progress outside of your comfort zone these people had to be right 85 percent of the time and wrong 15 percent of the time if they were not wrong 15 percent of the time they would lose interest but if they were wrong more than 15 percent of the try they would give up so it's seen that there's a ratio of success to victory that allows us to move forward. Now, if you take a CrossFit workout, trust me, they're not winning 85% of the, of the time. They're not. So it's more that is, uh, first of all, don't train your wife. But second of all, if you're trying someone who's getting there, give them victories, not too many, four out of five. Let's call it that. Give him four victories for one failure and then watch them move forward. But a lot of time it's a setup, is if you create the right approach to training, people will take, people know what steps to take. They watch Kung Fu movies, they, they know they're not in shape, right? That, that is something and I, I've, uh, I'm dealing with some overweight people and like there is the whole fattest agenda right now that tells you like fat is great, round is a shape and all that stuff. Bullshit, for your health, it ain't good to be overweight. And we talk, we, we have real talks. And you know what they tell me? My feet hurts, my back hurts. I feel like shit continuously, right? So you have to take that into account when you're gonna start training someone because the person comes to you, they're overweight, right? Right, right. Well, that's, that's assuming in this case, example. yeah. Or no, not, but, I mean like as an example. Right, it's right, not that to say that, because you're, 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 like, you're, no, you're born like calling someone's saying. wife fat. No. <laughs> that's not what I'm saying, but someone, okay, so let's go to the wife then. If someone goes like, I hate training and I can't be consistent, usually they either don't come from an athletic background or they got traumatized as a child athlete. It's one or the other. Both cases are gonna be very rough. Someone who doesn't have an athletic background who's not in shape or super skinny or whatever. The second they start doing stuff, things are gonna ache. Yeah. If the wife is 30, 35, never trained before, body's a wreck. From sitting, from, you know, like all our Western lifestyle, the body's a wreck. There's, there's imbalances everywhere, deficiencies, she can't hinge for shit, because that's an actually complex movement. Uh, squatting is a problem. Uh, like, you start that workout, it's gonna be rough. So, to give wins and not losses is gonna be rough, and which is why most people are gonna quit. But to go back to my point of, being a fattest. Uh, it's not good for your health in the sense of like people feel like shit, they, they hurt everywhere. You need to know that when they come to, to see you for training because imagine if you blast them. Well, they're already hurting everywhere, so they ain't gonna get any better, right? So you have to use uh, low waste. You, there, there, there are ways to do this, but the point is to, not, is to try to not feed the negativity that they're already coming with. Because, and, and also remember like, Empathy for people coming in the gym uh, when it's not their life. It's, it's, it's an endeavor. When I go to the global gym, I get stressed out. I mean, like, because people are looking, because there's always a, you know, dick swinging competition in any gym. Who has the biggest arm? Who has the bigger shoulders? Can I lift more, more weight than he does? And if I don't, I'm going to make form of his form because I'm... I mean, like guys are always looking like this at each other, like everybody looks at you like I'm, or I'm looking at people having horrible form and I can't concentrate on what I'm doing. I want to do the exercise that I want to do and I don't care if there's five people going like, oh my God, oh my God. Uh, it's, it's a very difficult place to train correctly. You know what I mean? Like that's why I love CrossFit gyms and I love having my own gym even more. I mean, I'm at a stage where I can train really hard on my own, so I like this a lot better. But you know, like it's a complicated endeavor. So you're an overweight person or a person who feels uncomfortable about their own body, either feeling wise or appearance wise, and you walking into, into a gym and then there's those five young, super attractive girls over there or lifting heavy weights and everything. It's, uh, 
you know, like for your ego, it ain't good. It's hard. And then you're sweating and you look like shit. Like they look like goddesses. Even when they sweat, they look sexual about it, right? You, you're a mess. Like your hair is in your face. You have your sweater because you want people to see you. And then like you feel like shit. And then you don't know what to do anyway. And then, I mean, and so imagine that in a CrossFit class where you blast the workout. I'm not saying that you're doing that. I'm just... You know, giving an overall, yeah. Just like I wasn't calling his wife fat. I was talking about I was just making sure that he understood that too. Right. What, what I'm know? trying to say <laughs> is that as coaches, we forget how hard it can be for beginners or people who don't like to train to jump into our world. I cannot understand someone not liking to train. That is the most insane thing that I can understand. I've been at a national level, sport level. Uh, 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 I've been in a national level, yeah, in sports since I'm nine years old. So... I don't know what it's like to not train. I feel horrible when I don't train. Like, uh, so I, I can't, I, I, can can't be, I can't relate at all. I, can be, I can't relate to that. But wh what I can relate to is every time I walk into a global gym or a gym that I don't know well and everything, is the first time in a jujitsu or stuff like that, it's scary. It is. And, and, and when it's scary, you, you're going to look at the negative a little bit closer. And I mean, you're going to be, afraid of injuries like and let's say okay so you have a wife 30 40 whatever kids maybe business shit to do you do a crossfit workout or anything else i'm not picking on crossfit uh and then you're sore for three days and then suddenly going around the house uh lifting, lifting up, up the, the kid, kid uh, hurts. i find it funny when i'm that sore i find it hilarious because i get so used to it i kind of like it but may, she might be hating feeling like that i know that when i'm sore i feel tired and sleepy that's a freeze mode, right? Her freeze mode might be to get super angry because she, have, she feels she has less energy than usual. So maybe, because there's that aspect too, right? Your reaction to training. So sometimes you hate the training because the training sucks, right? Because it hurts and everything. It makes your feet worse, it makes your lower back worse and all that stuff, right? But sometimes there's also the other aspect, which is how do you feel after the workout? Most of us feel great. But sometimes when you're sore or, or stuff like that, like some people do not react well. They, they're in freeze because they went so high into the intensity that they froze right away because they don't know how to fight through it. So now they're in freeze. Freeze means low energy, means that fatigue that we did the podcast on. I know women hate being tired. Yeah, that's, I, I Most women I talk to, their number one thing is they hate being tired. That makes them feel like failures. Yeah, biggest I, failures I, for women completely agree. right he's right. feeling tired that. right so you do a really hard workout not condition you're going to be so everywhere you're going to be really tired maybe that's what she hates and that's why she's not consistent because she goes i don't want my energy to be put into this what she does not understand is that that energy will grow into that she's not tired she's fatigued she's in freeze her observation of the workout did not match the prediction <coughs> so that's what's happening like the soreness or, or, or stuff like that like she wants to succeed but she cannot she's in freeze that makes her feel fatigued so sorry she's not yeah she's not tired she's fatigued as in in freeze that would stop you from training which is what happened with me for example in bodybuilding every time right so you have two aspect two aspect to this right so to make someone stick with it first they have to want it I think that's, that's a big, big one, one too. Uh, we, yeah. If you don't want it, like, like, look, this. Let's be honest. Training sucks, and even at a high level, you get one out of three that is a good training session, right? Yeah. Most of the other ones, you go like, oh, I don't. Feel, that doesn't feel good today. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. I, I was uh, listening to Jay Cutler saying that four times Mr. Olympia. He was top two for like ten years. 10 times. It's insane. Top two, 10 times. Yeah. It's crazy, right? Uh, the dude has been training his entire adult life. He started lifting weight. He was like, what, 14 or something like that? Uh, probably before that. Um, and he's like, I get one out of three good training sessions. That's insane. Mr. Olympia. Yeah. Right. So that tells you where we all are. So and even we in a good that. workout, sometimes you, after the workout, you feel really good. But in the middle of the workout, you go like... Oh, like <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> what does the middle of the workout yeah. ever feel no, good? No, but I mean, like, for people... How many rounds again? Yeah, yeah. Uh, for people who are not used to it and they feel like that in the middle of a, of a workout, they don't so realize that afterwards... Yeah, you get, you get the... You, you feel good after, but it's not during, that's for yeah. sure. And then you get the good feeling when you see progress in the mirror, when you see... 
that you lifted more weight, like you get PRs, that's what you get the fuel to train, but the f training itself, yeah. rarely. I think also training with people you like really helps. Right, so, so but the why, okay, so but that, that's the why. The why can be to be within the community, to be with your friends and everything. Right, but then that brings to the second aspect is like, what are your ex expectations of the workout? If he's training with your friend and it's walking around for 10 minutes uh, at the beach talking to your friend, that doesn't sound that bad now, does it? All right, so, but you're gonna say it's useless, is it? Maybe it's better than sitting on the couch or not doing anything. Or, so what can we find that will make you do progress that you're willing to do without, <coughs> right? Without, freak, without going like that's too much. And be honest about it. I know one thing after all those years and we have to do podcast after dark so I can explain my position better. It is very, very hard to get women to tell you truly how they feel. I'm not going to say you guys lie, but to get a straight answer out of women is a hard thing as a coach. Let's put it this way. You know, like you ask a question, say, I can take it, I can endure it, I can do this, I can do that. I'm like, That's not what I was asking. What I was asking is, how do you feel? How do you feel? Or women were like, I'm fine. I'm great. Everything is awesome. Everything is sublime in my life. And you go, that's okay, but ask how did the weight feel? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's that every single time. All the male coaches are laughing, trust me. Because every time you're like, I was not asking about your relationship with your kids. Uh, but we can talk about it if you want. But it's that every time. It's like, because it's a comp The second you say, how do you feel? It's a competition. I feel great. What are you saying? Are you saying she feels better than me? Is that what you're saying? Who are the toughest yeah. athletes that you ever had? Toughest athletes? What do you mean? Well, that depends what you call, uh, what so you call like toughest. A, do you Biggest ego, men. Hardest emotionally and to get anything out of women. Not anything out of physically, results, because women will do whatever you ask. But like, how do you feel? You, to get a straight answer out of a woman on how do you feel is the most complicated thing in the world. It's four months. You're like, but I asked you that four months ago. Like you're telling me now that you hate that one? You'd be saying you love it for four months. I bought the whole, I, I, I built the whole programming on that movement. You're telling me now that you hate it? Yeah. <laughs> or they cried to get out of shit. <laughs> oh yeah, I had that one. Valerie did that all the time. And at some point I was like, you're lying. Those are fake tears. She was like, yeah. I just didn't want to do it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> My point exactly. My point exactly. Right. So anyway, so <laughs> let's, I'm, I'm dis awesome. I digress, right? You're giving me inspiration. Right, I digress. So fighting truly what the baseline is so that they don't feel judged. Uh, but uh, we need to know what we can actually do. That's the whole point of the Q minus one training, right? Just quit minus one, right? That's what we need to do. And then after that, uh, and that's a coach, that's a relationship, you know, like, past the training session is to find out if the results of the workout are touching a nerve. In that sense, for women, I would go with the fatigue thing. If they're in freeze and they have low energy, they will not like it. Women will never tell you they're depressed. If you noticed, they'll tell you they're anxious, but never depressed, which is a complete lie because if I remember uh, correctly, you have more women that suffer from major depression disorder than you, d you have men. They just don't say it. So if you look at stuff, you see that all men are, are, are suffer depression. That's not true. I think it's at least 50-50 men to women. I think it's actually higher in women, but they don't say it. Depression. So they what say they're anxious. Why do you think they don't say it? Social pressure, competition. You guys hate not having energy. Why? Because you're not up to the task for your daily activities and it makes you feel weaker than other women. Does it sound right? Maybe, maybe. So stuff like that. So you have to make sure that those work out. And again, it's gonna, sometimes it's gonna be very hard to get the truth out of that one. But we- So you think it's pure, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. You think it's pure competition thing between other women? Right, but you, okay, pure competition between women is a very complex idea. Yeah. Like it's not, oh, I'm, I'm in competition with women. This goes to almost to your DNA. Like you're competing to get, if we go biologically, to get the semen of the best feeding male out there so that your kids can survive. It's a survival mechanism. Like the, there's competition between men too because we want the most attractive female. So female have a different 
Wait, but we compete through beating the living shit out of each other. That's simple, that's easy. Just kill the other guy. Right. Women, it's a whole different type of competition, but there is a tremendous competition between women. And no, it's not the patriarchy. It's just a deep-rooted need to advance certain things. Like you see that, like the, the stories of lobster are absolutely awesome when it comes to the way they react. How long do we have? Five minutes? Awesome. Lobsters. So um, serotonin-based nervous system, just like, the, just like humans. So, and so two lobsters face each other, right? They want the hole so that the women can go there. Uh, lobsters come. First of all, they send the pheromones to say fuck off, right, the smell. Then they puff off their chest and they raise their claws. They go like this in front of each other, which is funny because they pump a very specific type of hormone that activates the, the back muscle, the back muscle, the posture, the posture muscle of the lobster. Then they start fighting. The loser will lose the serotonin level. It will drop down below where it was before. So the loser becomes a loser. Whereas the winner will have a higher level of serotonin that he had before the fight. The winner becomes a winner, the loser becomes a loser. The more he loses, the more he's a loser. The less attractive to the females he is. So the females sees that. She goes for the one with the biggest chest, the one that wins, because she can smell it too. There's pheromones in place. So she goes around his place, right? And parading is not enough because the guy is still trying to beat up all the neighbors, right? So she has to release pher pheromones to finally get his attention. Ah, he's looking at me. So then there's a whole stuff going. She goes into the hole and she's going to stay there. In order for her to uh, copulate, she has to break her shell, which I find the funniest shit ever. She has to break her shell completely. So she's just a soft lobster thing that we eat at that point. She's at the most vulnerable she can be. That is the only way she can mate. And then once she made it, she's gonna stay in his house until she builds a bigger shell and then fucks off. It is the funniest thing ever. If you study the behavior of lobster, you end up laughing for 10 minutes. It's like my teenage years. It's so funny. Right. Yeah, so this stuff like that, that are just, by the way, uh, Nervous system, 600 million years. That's how long it's been built. And so we share that with the lobster for 500 million years, serotonin based. It's more like a fight hormone. It's not a hormone of happiness, it's a fight hormone. I did a podcast on that. Uh, that behavior is set in. Like it's just, you know, we humans, we're so superior, but there's al we also on some levels have a, we share the same nervous system as, as uh, Maybe not all animals. Well, the octopus is different, but that's an alien, so that's, that's another problem. The octopus are not from Earth, but let, anyway. Um, we share the same nervous system, so the, the, there's a base fundamental level of competition we cannot change. And you see it in apes, you see it in, it's, it's always the same. So women are, are as competitive as men, if not more, but in a different way. So it can be, it's less aggressive, but it's more based on worlds, for example. But do you think that women do better in training in a group? Yes. Yeah, yeah. W women are far more agreeable, far more social, and the competition will drive, drive them very far. Sometimes a bit too far. They can be a danger to that. Yeah. So, like, so f women are very loyal in the sense of, like, when they have a coach, they will do exactly as he says, or she, he or she says. They are, um, that's that agreeable uh, type where, you tell me 10 reps, I'll do 10 reps and everything. So that plus the competition with others, and then they, they'll push themselves to the death. So that CrossFit is allowing them yes. to make such progress because there's a constant push. But that constant push also allows you to have less of a freeze effect after. Because you know why you're training. I'm trying to beat that bitch over there. Like the, the one who passes me by, I'm gonna beat her today. That's for sure. To the point where some women will only train with men because they just can't take it anymore. Yeah. But yeah, it happens like all the time. I was doing a, a CrossFit class two right. days back and they, they, didn't, like they didn't like it. Like one woman was just like bumped into yeah. me. It was very aggressive. Right, right. but so <laughs> but it it's funny. Is. But then it allows the women to be competitive yeah. in, in an activity and there's a workout on the board. So she's going to do as she's told 
victory number one, that's the agreeable type. It's like, I'm going to be a good girl and I'm going to finish the workout just like he told me to. And I'm going to use the technique he tells me. So they're very coachable in nature. Suck at telling you how they feel, but very coachable in that sense. And then the competition against the other means I'm going to push as hard as I can. And that's the culture of CrossFit. I win across the board. Less of a freeze mode. I have energy from working out instead of losing it. Do you think then that it's very important that you do um, classes based on uh, level? So you don't yeah. lose too much so or you, you know, don't... 85-15, like that ratio, you have to give your people four wins for a loss. Yeah. We are 25 minutes, so there'll be enough for this episode. And then if you have questions on the topic, let's do another one. Or maybe a main podcast on it. It's a good subject. Yeah, it's a good subject. Yeah. Training men versus training women. That oh, there's, there's a minefield. Yeah, I'd, that should go very well. That's going to be maybe awesome. We don't talk after what if you don't minutes. identify as a woman? How would you train? Exactly. That's going to be a minefield. Anyway, talk to you guys soon. <laughs>